I who is there within the world. Uh, in a pre-theoretical, non-theoretical basis. Put that another way. Come back to this um, subject-object dichotomy. The naturalist ignores subjectivity in um, a Husserl sense and focuses simply on the object, giving objective scientific accounts of how that knowledge is possible. Um, it would be a mistake, on the other hand, to bracket out the object and just concentrate on the subject in some sort of introspective fashion. Because there is in the life world, there is in reality, no such thing as the I of I know without an object of knowledge. So what you're trying to study really is not the subject, not the object, in the sense that Descartes said, that's a thinking thing, that's an extended thing. No, what you're trying to study is the hyphen. Yeah, what is the relationship between these two by virtue of which we have knowledge? Because the I know something, no is the hyphen, you see. So what is that universal structure of consciousness of which knowledge is a phenomenon? You see, that's the question. Um, well, that, that same sort of thing becomes evident in the existentialists when uh, Heidegger says uh, that uh, our existence design, literally being there, you see, it's not a private, isolated being, my being. It's a being there in the world, you see. Um, and the, uh, the same is true in Sartre's um, well-known um, statement uh, that we are um, um, cast into a world not of our own making. Uh, there's a being in the world. That's the very nature of human existence. That inness, being in the world. So um, the mistake then of Descartes was not only that he was not radical enough in his doubt, in his bracketing, didn't go back far enough. But it was also that he conceived of the I as a separated I. That is to say, I'm an I whether or not there's a world. You see? And he didn't know there was a real world until medication six. All that t for all that time, he may be working just, just an I. Well, meditation three, it's I and God. You see? But he really has no basis for arguing other finite selves until meditation six. You've got a body. And hence some analogous reading in terms of my mind body relationship and yours. But it's a very artificial kind of role. And what Husserl is, is after is an understanding of the I as it is concretely. The theoretical attitude of Descartes has to be bracketed. You cannot abstract the eye from its concrete relationships. Um, well then, what are we going to say about the hyphen? A little thing like a hyphen. And the main thing that um, uh, Husserl uh, um, emphasizes, and this uh, is often regarded as his great discovery. The one thing is the intentionality of consciousness. The intentionality of consciousness. Now, keep in mind the term intentionality 
as it was used in the late medievals. It has to do with the conscious external reference which the mind has in knowing something. Perception, knowledge, other states of consciousness are teleological acts. Acts oriented towards an object. Now, Descartes gives us the image of consciousness as simply entertaining ideas within the mind. And that representational view leaves wide open whether there are any objects the ideas are about. You see. Uh, whereas what Husserl is saying is one of the universal features, part of the very essence of human consciousness, is that it's always consciousness of. Consciousness of, an idea of, knowing that. It's always reference to it. It's directional. That's true even in memory. You're referring back. Anticipation. Referring on to the future. Thinking of some absent member of the class. Reference to him. There's always that. Sometimes it's a reflexive act. Thinking on that thought, you see. But uh, this is the very nature of the act of consciousness. It's not a passive sort of thing, the way Locke pictured receiving ideas, passively, tabula rasa. But it's an active sort of thing. And this is his debt to Kant, you see. Uh, Kant introduced the notion of the, the self, the conscious self, as an act kind of knower uh, that actually contributes uh, to experience uh, forms that unify it temporally, spatially, and then categories that unify the understanding uh, beyond the experience. Now, uh, this is what um, Husserl then is um, referring to that act of consciousness that does something. What does it do? And the, um, the language that is used here for describing what intentionality does um, ranges uh, various things. Uh, first, it um, makes the object present to me. Yeah. The object does not present itself to me passively opening the door. You see? Uh, but I, by as it were, giving attention to, get the reference there, by giving attention to something, um, putting my mind to it, See what we're saying? Putting my mind to, giving attention, looking at. What I do is to make the object present to. I bring the object in. Um, this is sometimes said as um, a constitutive act. Yes, because but in the act of knowing, I constitute the object an object, an object of knowing. In terms of the subject-object relationship, there's no object without a subject. How can it be an object if it's not an object for some subject? Any more than there isn't, isn't a subject without an object. How can it be a subject if there's not a subject to have some object? You see. And so... Um, what it does is to constitute the object, the object for me that it is. You see? Now that's almost Kantian. In the act of knowing, the thing in itself becomes a thing for me. In knowing, I constitute it a thing for me. You see? Well, in addition to constitutive, it is a constructive act. 
Um, just as for Kant, it is the, uh, the time form that schematizes the understanding. So the very nature of my knowing, you see, constructs, constructs the, the overall situation, pulls it together for me. It's not just the isolated object, uh, but the whole scene that is interrelated for me. Uh, all knowledge is in that sense uh, self-referential. Uh, it's like uh, here I stand, I can, do, I can see no other. Because from where I stand, I see it all in these relationships, in relationship to me than our. Whereas from your perspective, it might be different, but it's constructive. Um, by the same token, um, it is a meaning-giving act. It's a meaning-giving act. Um, it's not so much Husserl who uses this phrase, I think, but some of the later writers. The um, underlying assumption here is that uh, whatever else the act of knowing does, in seeing it as the object for me, I give it meaning for me. And in that sense, I give it meaning. Um, the um, confusing thing is that um, intentionality with its uh, referentiality uh, is itself sometimes called the act of meaning, simply because our word meaning is ambiguous. You see, if I mean something, what do I mean when I say, it's you I mean? but it's you I'm referring to, it's you I intend in what I'm saying. So one sense of meaning has to do with referentiality, intentionality. The other sense of meaning is, uh, yeah, more the existential thing of giving meaning to something that's meaningless, or giving it to it a certain meaning that it's going to have for me. So, um, in the more existential phenomenology, you find that notion of the, the meaning giving. Um, in any case, it's the notion of ordering the objects, ordering the world. Um, yeah, consciousness is not passive, but active. Um, Consciousness is not representational, carrying mental pictures of what's out there. It's not representational, it's constitutive. The idea, the ideas that I have about something constitute it as that for me. You see, it's not just representational, copy theory. So, um, Intentionality, then, is the, is the key to the whole thing. Um, if, um, uh, if you read much about uh, Husserl, you soon discover that he spent most of his energies trying to develop the method and left other people to use it. Um, that may be an overgeneralization. Uh, he does do, for instance, a phenomenology of time consciousness. Time consciousness. Uh, and time is no ordinary object of thought. Anything post-Kantian. Because if time is the unifying form of all consciousness, it's the form you remember of the internal sense, but even our ideas of the external sense are known to us in the internal sense, and so they are time-organized as well. So the whole world, for me, is time-organized. Well, what he's trying to do there is to do a phenomenology of that time consciousness, which is really getting at the heart of the Kantian sort of thing. Um, his earliest...